Hey everyone, Irit here with another daily sketching video. The series is coming to an end. Oh, someone asked me about these little papers that I'm using sometimes. So it's by Prima. It's just, you know, nothing special. Uh, I'm guessing cellulose paper, but they do come with um, in these cute sizes. And the small one is really perfect for just swatching and testing colors out. I usually prefer to use uh, scraps if I have of watercolor, you know, paper, either paintings that have gone <laughs> wrong <laughs> or um, just pieces that I cut off to make a sketchbook or something like that. But these small pads are also um, just nice to have around. I've had mine for years, so I'm trying to use it up. The color today is Lunar Black, and I'm just using my color wheel to find some color inspiration. I think actually the better thing would be to have, um, you know, uh, a paper with swatches of the palette which I did do for my Italy palette uh, just because I figured it made sense when I'm traveling that I don't have to swatch every color even though I'm quite familiar with most of the colors in my palette that I don't need to swatch them but it's still nice to have this reminder and reference and yeah sometimes I use the color wheel or I do little swatches to see which colors I'm craving at the moment. So did I say this is Lunar Black? This is Lunar Black. This is a color by Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith has a few of these lunar colors. There's Lunar Earth, Lunar Red Rock, Lunar Blue, Lunar Violet, and Lunar Black. I think those are all of them. And the uh, what's... Basically, they are all very, very granulating colors. Now, while I think Lunar Earth and Red Rock and Blue are more unique, I think the Lunar Blue is actually a mixture of granulating black and um, phthalo blue or something like that. So you could mix it yourself. And then the, the Lunar Violet, uh, it's a pretty color, but I think a lot of brands now do something similar, kind of that muted purple with um, granulation color. Um, the Lunar Black is also something I think you can find in other brands. Look for something like Oxide Black and yeah, you just want something granulating. Now, I haven't tried other brands. What is nice about this color is that you can see also in the swatch there on the top left corner, it is, um, it, it still has it not like a transparent base, but you know, it's not like super opaque. What is very um, obvious about it is the granulation and that's why I like it and that's why I use it. And I also like to mix it with other colors to add that granulation. So it doesn't have that like strong black opaqueness that can make a color look dull. That is at least my experience. And I also really liked the color scheme that I have going on here. I think there's Potter's Pink there. That's for sure is Potter's Pink. But I didn't really pay attention to the other colors because <laughs> I was focused on the the black. But I did go for, you can see, it's relatively um, more mute than my usual. And I think I don't even go overboard with all the rainbows. <laughs> in this case. So I really love this color. I don't know, like I really love this version. So sometimes I just really enjoy a version of a color, even if other brands do this or do something similar. Sometimes just a brand gets it right. And, you know, I tried with Quinacridone Rose it's a very common color, but it does seem that every brand has a slightly different version. And from what I've tried, or they call it in different names, I don't know. But I've bought several tubes trying to, you know, save some money and get something similar to the Daniel Smith um, Quinacridone Rose. And they're just not the same. So I've given up and I'm just going to stick with <laughs> the Daniel Smith one uh, for now just because it's the prettiest version of that color for my personal taste. I've been getting questions about my flat brush. This is a Jackson's 
studio i think flat brush nothing special the size is three quarters of an inch and it has become really really um popular <laughs> for my paintings i really enjoy it i think it works well for certain purposes and it works really well for this size uh, of a sketchbook because if i used a larger round brush i would get a lot of water and when i'm doing like these backgrounds or brush strokes i don't want a ton of water so the flat brush doesn't hold as much water as the round brush which allows me to get kind of a more intense uh, application without having to work at it uh, too much so again i'm using a little bit the neo color one which i've been loving I really wanted to do a favorites video for August, but I'm, I just don't know if I'll have enough time. Okay, this is something interesting. I wanted to talk about this. This is by Windsor & Newton. This is their granulation medium. And I also have the Schmincke granulation spray, which I hate. I think it's just a worthless uh, product, which is very unusual for Schmincke. You can see now what it does in the palette and yeah, so both of these are supposed to increase granulation, but the Schmincke spray, you're supposed to spray it from a certain distance at a certain, you know, you have to get the timing right when the paint is not too dry, not too wet. I have tried it numerous times. I never got any noticeable effect that I really enjoyed. And it just smells so like, I, I really feel like it's just alcohol in it. So it kind of makes it really, really overpriced. Now, the Windsor Newton granulation um, medium, someone mentioned it, I think, in a comment or something. And I thought, okay, that sounds interesting. And what do you know? I had it on my desk hidden somewhere where <laughs> behind some stuff and probably bought it years ago. I'm trying to test it. I still didn't get, I still haven't formed an opinion. What I can tell you now without a doubt now that I'm saying it, I'm not sure because I didn't try it on multiple inks, but I did try it on one acrylic ink that I got. And I think acrylic inks are pretty, you know, like liquid acrylics. I think the formulation is pretty similar across brands. Uh, I don't think there's anything like super special about it, but it creates a gorgeous, gorgeous, like extreme separating granulating effect. So I absolutely want to explore this further. I don't know when <laughs> because, <laughs> um, yeah, well, we'll see. Probably in uh, late September if and when school starts. You never know uh, these days. But yeah, so the Windsor & Newton one, I actually didn't try the Schmincke one with the acrylic ink, but the Windsor & Newton one, and this is also someone, I think Helen wrote it in the comments. So if I got it right, thank you, Helen. And if not, then I'm really sorry if I um, gave credit to the wrong person. But I think Helen, you wrote that um, it reacts like that with acrylic inks. And I listened and tried, and what do you know, it's amazing. So if you like that uh, texture, I think, then you have to try this, but I will test it further. So don't take my word for it just yet. Um, as for the watercolors, I I don't know, you know, I tried adding, adding it to colors that don't granulate and then colors that do granulate. Sometimes it adds more granulation, but I found it to be not very consistent and kind of hard to, I don't know, yeah, because it's not consistent, then I don't really know what I'm going to get. Uh, I think what could be interesting is just mixing a few drops of it into a freshly squeezed tube and then um, a, like a freshly squeezed paint that you put in a pan or something straight from the tube and then add a little bit of the granulation and m fluid medium, mix it together and see what happens i would be very happy to have a medium that intensified granulation in a consistent reliable way so for me i would be happy to add it you know when i fill a well or a pan it will be great to add it and know that the color is granulating more but i can't tell you if that works so if you have experience with this product that you've tried it you know across brands and paints then let us know in the comments so we can all read and learn um i will 
test it more and get back to you on that. I think what I started to say before, I think with watercolors, because they are such a flat medium, you know, with their finish and just their application, that it's not something that you have texture. I think it's always interesting to find different ways of creating texture. And of course, you can use something like watercolor ground um, to do that. Or you could even try, if you have in your stash, uh, different mediums for acrylics, like um, modeling paste and that sort of thing. You could absolutely try them and you'll get really interesting effects. But something like that, like this, that is already a liquid, um, I think it's great because, you know, you don't have to... It's not like an added step of something you have to apply to the paper and wait for it to dry and all those things. For me, sometimes that's a, a real... Um, like it keeps me from doing something barrier what's the word i'm looking for hinderness is that a word <laughs> but <laughs> i don't know you know I, I need something that works <laughs> that works with the way i have a kid at home surprising i know and little sh cuckoo. cuckoo um i just need something that works for me also to I the way that i Okay, calm it down. To the way that I paint. So um, if this works properly, if I can figure it out or make it work for me, then that will be great. Anyway, uh, moving on with my painting here. I think you can see how gorgeous the granulation of this lunar black is, you know, with or without granulation medium. It's fantastic. Mm. And I... Yes. I ran out of it and I might just just you know pick up the large tube and not bother with testing other brands I don't know if you tried from if you tried like oxide black or you have a good granulating black that is not too opaque and dull um, and is vegan then let me know in the comments otherwise I'll probably just pick up the I know Rembrandt has a version. I bought the Van Gogh half pan of Oxide Black and I think it's okay. I have to um, just paint with it a little bit more to make a decision. Yeah, just adding some finishing touches with this cute brush. This is the mini majestic quarter inch from a brand that I Royal and Langnickel. And it's a really nice brush. And again, because it's, you know, it's slanted, but it's also flat. Um, it holds, it can hold a lot of pigment and not a lot of, and not too much water. So I like to use it for those smaller brush strokes, Lily. <laughs> and um, yeah, it also splatters nicely. But for splatters, like hands down, my favorites are round brushes. Lily, Lonely Lonely the, um, yeah, round brushes and quill brushes are the best for splatters. Okay, I think <laughs> I think my time is running out. <laughs> Please forgive the. Oh, something that is always I have to be always careful about, and probably some of you are like are cringing right now. Okay, so the word die in Hebrew is enough so or like please stop so <laughs> I always have to be careful when I say it <laughs> because you can imagine it's a very common word with kids that you tell them <laughs> enough already <laughs> but in English it's also you know die and yeah so just to clarify that um the entertainment that we get from learning new languages and new words. <laughs> so don't worry, I never say that to my kids. I'm speaking Hebrew to, I speak Hebrew to my daughters and they both uh, speak uh, German and Hebrew as their native tongues and they are picking up English. I mean, my eldest already speaks English, but uh, Lily is also picking up English so that... <laughs> Their father and I will not have uh, a language we can um, speak without their understanding. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and this series. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye. Hi. -bye.